Everyone's heard about the semiconductor chip shortage, but did you know the car shortage will get even worse? Not because of this shortage, but because of yet another phenomena already in the work. Buckle up, because today we're going to see how Russia cutting off natural gas and oil supplies to Europe will cause more pressure on the global car industry, and how this will soon hit home in America. And be sure to stay till the end when we talk about how the military is actually taking technology away from your passenger EV, and how this will impact your future car. If you think the conflict in Eastern Europe won't impact us here in the States, since the crisis is happening overseas, well, you're in for a big surprise. Here's the thing. The U.S. gets about 34 to 38% of its energy from natural gas. Guess where we get our natural gas from? Believe it or not, 98% of our natural gas is actually imported from Canada. So what does it have to do with the war or the U.S. car shortage? Well, the conflict in Eastern Europe has been wreaking havoc on global energy markets. I'm talking about natural gas and oil. Supplies and prices won't be going down anytime soon. A lot of it has to do with the Russian gas giant Gazprom. And when I say gas giant, I mean giant. To see how big they are, you have to see their 2019 statistics. They had sales over $120 billion, ranking them as the largest publicly listed natural gas company in the world. But last month, they suspended their natural gas supply to Poland and Bulgaria. And now they threaten to suspend other countries' supplies too, if these countries don't pay in rubles, which is the Russian currency. That's no minor threat for the EU, because EU imports 41% of its natural gas from Russia. Yet the EU isn't backing down. Actually, they're going the complete opposite way, and it's already costing them big time. Germany, Italy, and France are the biggest EU buyers of Russian natural gas. They use it to generate electricity and heat, but they also use it to power their manufacturer industries, and that includes plants to make cars. Just look at Germany. Last year, Germany imported 32% of their natural gas, 30% of its crude oil, and 53% of hard coal, all from Russia. In fact, many manufacturing companies including car factories in Germany, run on natural gas to produce car parts and assemble vehicles. So much so that Germany's economy minister stated that Germany won't achieve full independence from Russia's supplies before mid-2024. Germany just cannot ban Russian imports immediately because they're too critically dependent on them. In 2020, Volkswagen depended on non-renewable energy sources for 80% of its needs, and BMW's dependency was over 60%. Over 50% of these car makers' energy consumption were from fossil fuels, the largest chunk being from natural gas. The CEO of Volkswagen Group, Herbert Diaz, warned that being cut off from Russian gas poses a serious threat to Volkswagen itself. And CEO of Mercedes-Benz, Ola Kalensius, said that every company is looking at options to diversify energy sources right now. They're working closely with German authorities to secure their energy needs, just in case things get even worse. And BMW is also doing similarly. If Russia actually shuts off the pipeline, it would just add insult to injury. As it was, the German German automobile industry has been struggling to maintain new car production due to the global semiconductor chip shortage, and now the parts supply issues from OEMs in Ukraine. So losing the access to Russian supplies would be detrimental to German car makers. If Russia were to shut off all the gas flow to Germany, well, they are prepared to a certain extent, at least in the short term. Germany already entered the first stage of their emergency gas plan. If things worsen, they'll enter the second stage, which is called the alarm stage. This stage is when the supply gets disrupted or when there's an extraordinarily high demand that upsets the normal balance. But even this will be able to fix without direct intervention from other countries. But if the situation continues the nosedive, the third stage is the emergency stage. In that case, Germany's network regulator, the Bundesnetzagentur, will need to ration out any remaining gas supplies or across the country, if there's any remaining gas supplies at all. That's why German car makers are preparing now, in case things do reach stage 3 and natural gas is no more. Like Mercedes-Benz, they're looking at alternative fuels and other measures to keep car painting operations running if natural gas ends up being rationed in 2022. So that's Germany. But what about European car production as a whole? Well, major interruption to natural gas supplies will impair automakers' paint shops drastically. That's because paint shops need to create steam for heating and also compressed air. An alternative option could be fuels like butane and propane that are made at refineries that process oil, but cost is significantly higher for those options. Most of Europe's natural gas comes through pipelines like Yamal Europe, which cross Belarus and Poland to Germany, or Nord Stream 1, which goes directly to Germany. And gas markets in Europe are linked by a network of pipelines. Last year, Ukraine was actually a transit corridor, mainly for gas going into Slovakia. From there, it continued to Austria and Italy. Germany could alternatively also import from Norway, the Netherlands, Britain, 
Britain and Denmark via pipelines, but take a country like Norway for example. Norway is Europe's second largest supplier of natural gas, but right now they're already delivering natural gas at maximum capacity. Norway doesn't have the capacity to help the rest of Europe or make up for any natural gas shortages if Russia were to cut off supplies. But now let's travel east to Japan, because it's another giant in the global car industry. If you're wondering how the war is impacting car companies in Japan, well, Japan's factory output shrank for the second month in 2022 due to pandemic related production issues and economic pressures. Even before the crisis in Ukraine erupted, Japanese factories were struggling with global parts supplies disruptions as it was. Car factory output decreased 1.3% in January 2022 from the month prior. Both Toyota and Suzuki have reduced production levels and things have been getting worse. The February 2022 output of cars and other motor vehicles slumped more than 17% since the month prior. This was the first time in four months that that had happened. Did you know that last year the Japanese government announced its goal of renewable energy making up one third of the nation's power generation by 2030? This revised plan will cut gas and coal fired power generation by roughly 50% by the end of the decade. And now, let's bring it all home. The natural gas crisis doesn't impact us directly yet, but it's not good news for us either. Consider the fact that we get 98% of our natural gas from Canada. If Canada and other countries start exporting natural gas to Europe, this could impact our supply and what we pay for it too. But it's not just that. Sales of cars and light trucks fell sharply in the U.S. compared to a year ago. There's only more uncertainty ahead because of part shortages, rising interest rates, and high fuel prices. And don't forget the pandemic isn't over. Right now, China still has major pandemic lockdowns. Major U.S. car companies like Tesla have had to shut down production at their Chinese factories. Here's one thing most people don't even think about when it comes to U.S. car production, and that is military arms. The current crisis is causing many countries to re-examine their security and prepare more arms for defense, either to ship to Ukraine and to protect their own border. Obviously, this requires resources, supplies, and materials. And where will they get this from? They're reprioritizing and reallocating the resources and supplies that can otherwise be used in other manufacturing activities, including car production. By the way, did you know that the U.S. Army is continuing to look into the use of electric vehicles. Electric drivetrains offer several advantages over traditional drivetrains for military use. Actually, the military has been actively evaluating the past few years. Last year, General Motors Defense made an electric prototype of its infantry squad vehicle. This prototype produced more power than the standard diesel version and achieved the range of 70 to 150 miles. Also last year, the U.S. Army awarded contracts to six different companies to study different methods to power future fleet of EVs. This is for 225 thousand all-electric military vehicles. Believe it or not, these contracts are part of a larger plan that would lead to a long-term transition to EVs. It turns out that EVs actually offer more tactical advantages on the battlefield. For example, electric motors provide more torque at lower speeds than diesel engines. They also improve vehicle acceleration, towing capacity, and even climbing abilities. Electric drivetrains also reduce noise and thermal signatures, and it's much less than those from a diesel engine. Since infrared cameras and modern acoustic sensors can detect a diesel engine from miles away, having to reduce signature is critical to survive. Now, this may sound like some pretty cool military tech advancements, but it also means less EV parts for your new Tesla or any other new EV for that matter. If the world conditions continue on the same path it's on today, we can be sure that governments will prioritize supplies for military arms rather than consumer EVs. If you don't believe me, just watch the news. Governments have already started rededicating federal funds to amp up their militaries. Just look at our next door neighbor. Last month, Canada reportedly poured over $8 billion into new money for the Department of National Defense. On top of that, the Liberal government reportedly plans to invest heavily on buying weapons for Ukraine. It just shows that when it comes to military defense, the government has no problem shelling out the big bucks, rather than supporting local industries at home. And if you think $8 billion is high, well get this, last month President Biden announced a new $33 billion spending package to provide military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. $33 billion. That's a boatload of cash. Biden explained that the cost of this fight isn't cheap, but that caving into aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. All this is to say, amidst all this uncertainty and chaos, the only certainty is the global shortage of car parts and cars, especially when it comes to EVs. And you'll recall back in 2003, the Iraq war had a negative effect on the car market and car sales. And now we're seeing history repeat itself just in a different way. But now, you tell me. How do you think the American car industry will be impacted? Are we prepared for the worst case scenario if it were become a reality? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.